Even before she began working at the state capitol, a female lobbyist had always heard about the, quote, backroom, smoke-filled, patriarchal group, unquote, of lobbyists and lawmakers whose influence was widely known. Outside of that club, there is a core of professional female consultants with high-powered clients who are admired for their work, not their looks. Quote, I've always seen the state capitol as woman-friendly, and there were some good old boys for sure, but I've always felt that if I worked really hard, I could beat them, unquote. Her view of the culture at the state capitol has changed in recent years, she said. The best argument doesn't always win the day, she said. Quote, I don't know if it's our times or new people coming in, but more and more, it's getting to be that the end justifies the means, quote, unquote, she said. She referenced younger female lobbyists that she has found, quote, to be not completely honest in their dealings and use their femininity to their advantage, unquote. While many women work to be known as intelligent and honest, she said, others dress provocatively wearing short dresses and platform high heels or thigh-high boots, unquote, in a quest to whip votes. Those women at the state capitol are openly referred to as, quote, fluffers, and used in this setting as a way to get lawmakers in a jovial mood before talking business. Quote, there will always be some men, lawmakers, that are like, hey, good-looking girls, come over here. And I'm like, hey, can we talk about this policy? Unquote. Some legislators are going to be more susceptible to good-looking 20-year-old girls. That's kind of life. I may not win all the time, but I want to feel like I had a fair shot. I don't want to lose because I didn't wear a miniskirt. I've had that happen. And to lawmakers, I'm like, quote, oh my goodness, just because she showed you her boobs doesn't mean you have to hold my bills, unquote, she said, <laughs> referring to lobbyists and low-cut tops. Quote, that happens. Absolutely, it happens. With one former lawmaker, she found she could not get a bill through the Rules Committee unless she met him or took him to dinner. Quote, he had to get the attention, unquote, she recalled. Later in her career, a lawmaker remarked about her high heels. He said the shoes were similar to handles and could be useful during a certain sexual position. The encounter was mortifying. She complained to the close friend within days who recalled, quote, she told me about how disgusted she was that someone would even say that, unquote. But she didn't complain to leadership. More recently, she said that another lawmaker tried to get alone time with her during a party hosted by her firm's client. Quote, he kept trying to pull me away from the party, unquote, and repeatedly told her that she was beautiful. Quote, you try to extricate yourself from that situation without making it overly awkward. You want him to like you, but you don't want him to like you like that." Unquote. Within days, she texted and called her friend about the encounter to say how uncomfortable the lawmaker had made her. She asked the friend, quote, what are you supposed to say in a situation like that? Unquote. A male lobbyist said, as a rule, he does not send in young women to meet with lawmakers alone. Quote, politics is a unique environment, he said. You have people who have a position that they can use, and if they happen to be a little less than scrupulous about it, there's really not much recourse, unquote. In that environment, the elected officials hold all the power, he said, adding, quote, the person sitting across the desk largely dictates how that relationship goes. You have to balance what that person is asking you versus your client and your personal comfort level. For some, that might mean dinner and drinks. For others, it might mean helping that lawmaker garner support on a bill involving a pet issue. Quote, everybody has their own comfort level as far as how far they're willing to go in that environment, he said. I see certain lobbyists apply certain tactics, like targeting their more attractive staff members to go see certain members. 
quote, you have a job to do, and that's to get something from the legislature, unquote. Asked why so few people speak up about inappropriate behavior, he said, quote, everyone knows that if they talk out of school, the legislators won't trust them anymore. In the end, their first priority is to make money to feed their families, not to help clean up whatever is going on down there. Their clients pay them to get things done. They don't pay them to go on a crusade." Unquote. As a former legislative policy advisor, one young woman who is now a lobbyist said she has not experienced harassment or sexism. Quote, for me, it was not necessarily an issue of being a woman. It's just a general idea that I started very young, and you have to build credibility, end quote. Some of her role models quickly became her mentors, she said, and helped her improve her delivery of policy positions to lawmakers. Quote, I think I'm an outlier, end quote. Asked if she had heard about sexual harassment or inappropriate comments about other women, she said, quote, if it happened, I don't think people were as vocal about it as they would be now, end quote. First reaction to a story like this is that it's, there's an element to it that's politics as usual, but always the kind of politics that we didn't necessarily talk about. Stories like this should not surprise me at this point in time, but they do, because you would think at this point in where we are that people would not conduct themselves like that. When I covered the state capitol, women were intent on being looked at as equals and being looked at for what they have appear in their brains what they can can deliver in in brain power and it seems like if this is really happening we have backslid as as a gender and i find it incredibly sad and i understand that in politics um, they tend to think that the end result um, is worth whatever it takes to get there sometimes but that's just not true you know, we elect people that we expect to be paragons of the community, and they can't even conduct themselves with even a little bit of grace or decency. That's just disgusting. What's really important here is not just to focus on the men in positions of power who are, who are saying these things and treating women this way, but to focus also on the men and the women, like this lobbyist, this female seasoned lobbyist around them, who aren't calling time out, who aren't calling these people on these things. Knowing that this is happening in a place where we make laws, I think it just shows that no one is immune. In general, this is the way things have been done for a very long time. And probably in their own now more subtle ways will probably continue. A pig is always going to be a pig until somebody points out to him what he's doing or points out to everybody else. It's up to all of us to hold these sorts of people accountable and clearly that is not happening. <laughs>